do you find within the industry that models are competitive with one another? Cheers! Cheers! So today I'm speaking with Emily D. Donato. Did I get that right? You got oh it right. God. I just practiced well. it a few times. Because <laughs> in my head I say De Donato, <laughs> and now I'm gonna go back to that, but that's a new one. Sorry, no. she, or she's Donuts, also known as Donuts. So, thank you for joining me thank today. You for me. I'm so excited to have you. I've been thank fangirling you. over your YouTube, mm -hmm. fave YouTuber right here. I love wow. your videos. You're just so honest and transparent. You're just fabulous. I appreciate that feedback. Thank you. No problem. And I know it looks like I'm using Bear as a prop, but <laughs> there's an actual thunderstorm <laughs> happening, and she is scared. So well, I had some questions for you. I am, I'm flattered. You ready? I'm ready. For those of you who don't know, but you probably know, Emily is known as a beauty face in the industry, better known as one of the most beautiful faces okay. in the industry. I don't know about that. Has that given you any added pressure, knowing that you represent sort of a face of beauty? Yeah, I definitely wouldn't call it pressure. I feel like the good things that have come with age are almost worth the journey like age is a good thing even if i could look 18 again to go back to 18 i wouldn't i'm sure you know too yeah, like totally the knowledge and confidence that comes with age yeah. really outweighs like being young and youthful mm -hmm. i mean the phrase that youth is wasted on the young is so real but i also feel like the only times i feel like pangs of like emotion around age occasionally is like we're shooting a beauty commercial and i'm sure you know this too the macro close-ups when they're like this yeah. close to your face yeah. You almost need to go back to the 70s when like everyone looked fabulous Filtered. because everything was just really blurry and yeah. nothing was high dev and that's why everyone looks so good. It's so true. You know, I feel like with VS because that's focused on like body and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Does that add a pressure do you think to you to like stay a certain way? I the thing is for me with my body and I, I know I've brought up scoliosis so much but it's something that I know that I always have to take care of like mm -hmm. literally if I don't work out my back feels it first like mm -hmm. I have to keep my core strong for that reason alone so luckily like you know working out and focusing on my body has been like a bonus for my career so I wanted to talk to you a bit about where you're from because mm -hmm. we're both American and I feel like that's pretty unique like yeah. when I first started modeling there really weren't that many Americans Americans around. No. Do you agree? Yeah, it's funny. Like, I feel like when I first started modeling, and I've said this before on my channel, like, when I opened my mouth, people would be like, oh, you're very American. <laughs> and I think people just expect something exotic or yeah. something like that. But I do think being American is kind of like a unique thing for us. At least when I first started, we kind of first started, it was like the Russians, the Brazilians, yeah. they all travel in packs. Too. like they all yes. know each other yes. and then like it makes sense though they I speak love that that language. was the first you said yeah. because my first model apartment experience was like the Russians the Brazilians <laughs> and me but growing up where you're from which mm -hmm. is just what an Upstate hour and a half, half away mm -hmm. yeah how do you think your growing up experience has affected your career like do you think that it helped give you a really tenacious work ethic mm -hmm. or do you think that the the morals that are sort of similar to your hometown have affected mm -hmm. the way you've lived your life in new york and your career yeah definitely these are good questions oh, thanks. Um, well, i feel like well i grew up in upstate new york and i i came from like a very blue collar working class family my dad was a firefighter my mom was a stay-at-home mom my brother's a cop so i definitely like come from you know that sort of yeah. world what I do think that's instilled in me, and we kind of talked about this in my video, is like my parents were very much like, you know, you need to work, you need to make your money. And you know, when I was 17, 18, I was like, oh, but all my friends are going to college. I'm sure you like had the same experience. Yeah. And I was kind of like, oh, like, should I be doing that? Mm -hmm. Am I passionate about modeling? But I'm so glad that that was instilled in me. Yeah. Like, even if it's not perfect and it doesn't feel amazing all the time, it will pay off. Yeah. And it did. Like, mm -hmm. you know, my career really took off. I've been working for like 11, 12 years. Like, and I just kind of kept at it. Yeah. It definitely, they definitely instilled kind of like that work ethic in me. Do you think a really like strong work ethic matters in an age where people can become really famous on Instagram quite quickly? I think you can be an overnight sensation, right? Mm -hmm. That's luck, but I do think at the end of the day, we work in an industry where it's so collaborative and mm -hmm. there's so many personalities that come together and so many moving pieces. So I do think it does matter and make a difference. And also it's kind of like, will
will you get rebooked will people mm -hmm. bring you back will they you know recommend you for something else or bring you on you know yeah it and then you do start to really develop relationships you know bringing positive energy to set it's it's actually a lot of hard work it is, it is. <laughs> like you know we're literally like as good as our last job like sometimes we may not be rebooked mm -hmm. if we didn't do such a great job and that happens yeah of course it's like yeah. you have a bad day sometimes and i'm like I'm not coming back to this yeah. <laughs> Those guy, they hate me and I get it because I've been horrible today. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to that. We're still kicking though. <laughs> still, still here. <laughs> All right, so speaking of longevity, I love how you've been able to maximize your digital platform. Oh wow, you're so We're techie. And I just admire your crossover into YouTube. Thank you. So what inspired you to start it and do you like that it's given you some control yes i do like that um what inspired me to start it was like i just kind of reached this point and i'm sure you have too with instagram that i didn't feel like anyone actually knew who i was and i also felt like i don't know like i was like i have interests i have things i want to talk about i have other people i want to collaborate mm -hmm. with like in some of the uh, the videos on my channel i'm with like hairstylists makeup artists and it's so fun to have control yeah. create content that you're interested in and like really have the power behind how you're perceived and like yeah. what i don't know but it like to why? kind of be able to control your own narrative in yeah. a way like i think as models, one of the hardest things about our jobs is not having control. Yeah. Like we show up to set, probably actors feel similarly, mm -hmm. you know, we show up to set and we're told what to do and we do it, which is great. Yeah. And I'm very grateful for that. But at a certain point, like you start to have an opinion mm -hmm. and you want to be able to have some control. And mm -hmm. this is a great outlet to have control and to be creative. Yeah, exactly. I feel like especially when I first started modeling too, and I don't know if it's the same for you, but like we were two dimensional mm -hmm. and that's kind of how we were meant to stay. Oh like, yeah. You weren't really meant to have an opinion. Mm -mm. You didn't have to have a personality. Mm. Speaking of that, I yeah. wanted to talk to you about when social media was introduced yeah. and where you were in your career and if you remember it, because I consider us sort of the guinea pig generation of models. Mm -hmm. I like to call it. It's true. Yes, working on that trademark. Yeah. <laughs> we were models when this new revolutionary digital thing came over yeah. that literally impacted our career. So how have you coped with it and where were you in your career when it started? Yeah, I remember like when Instagram first came out and I remember when I downloaded it and I was like, cool, I can put like pretty filters on the photos I take, <laughs> but I wouldn't actually post them on Instagram. I would just use the filters. I was like, this is amazing. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cute. <laughs> but then eventually I think I actually did kind of lean into the Instagram thing, but also like when this is going to make me sound old, but even when MySpace was a thing, I was big on MySpace. Me too. Like I loved MySpace. Mm -hmm. I was like all up in it. So, and then when Instagram came around, I was kind of like, I'm into this. Yeah. I was posting with selfie. I was on <laughs> it. Everyone's like, I can't post a selfie. I was like, I can <laughs> like did not care. Like no shame. <laughs> so I think like I did kind of lean into it pretty early. Yeah. Yeah. On. Like even when Vine was around, rest in peace. Oh, like yeah. I did that. Yeah. Like, I was like, I just I love creating content, especially you video. Like, ex, like X page. Do you remember like making websites? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Me too. Oh my god. Yeah. Like I was doing it all, and I think like even with video editing, like I just get really into like that. Zone. Me too. I, no matter no matter how much effort you put in or time or like, there's still gonna be someone who has 500 million followers like just for existing. And then yeah. I'm over here like, gotta get this picture, <laughs> Kyle, my husband, that's not the right angle, just freaking help me. Yeah, what about you, like for Instagram and... Oh, I didn't know she was gonna do this to me. Sorry. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, when Instagram started, I initially posted photos of like graffiti or nature, of same. like things outside. A and, tree. Yeah, and like with <laughs> like 10 really bad filters. Yeah, yeah. Like, like sepia. Like, really bad, yeah. a lot of sepia. Yeah. Yeah. Lo-fi, like, yeah. getting creative. Yeah. Um, I actually had like a client intervention who was like, Martha, <laughs> you are missing out on a great opportunity. <laughs> like, like, like credit to your graffiti photos, but do you less. less. 
less of that, more of you. Yeah. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. Like, I'm not sure. I was getting used to the selfie thing. Like, yeah. it felt like really self indulgent in the yeah. beginning. But it then did. those yeah. were the photos that got the likes. Of course. And yeah. of course, now it feels like second nature. Yeah. Like, selfie, no problem. Yeah. But I saw, obviously, I was getting more followers and that, like, continued to snowball because I realized that's what people wanted to see. Mm -hmm. So then I just, it's normal now to share photos of myself. But in the beginning, I was like, this is really weird. It, it is, it is. I know, I forget, I think I forget that moment where you're like, this is weird still. <laughs> like, it is weird. It is still weird. But I don't know, for me, I was like, whoa, whatever. <laughs> We've been on a few jobs together. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if you remember all of them. First one, I do. London. I do. You never know. Sometimes I know. people forget. I know they we, do. We do so many. <laughs> London, Paris, and Barcelona. So yes. that alone shows how much uh, travel this job requires. Yeah. I was just in France and London, and I was there for longer than expected, and I was getting a bit homesick and yeah. felt a little bit kind of yeah. trapped. Not that I was trapped, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Do you have tips for people that are feeling lonely or homesick? homesick when traveling. Yeah, I actually have like quite a few things that I do. I basically just do anything that I can do to feel more at home somewhere, I do. So like that can be from having my favorite TV show downloaded. Yes. That might be weird, but like Grey's Anatomy for me just feels really grounding. Like I feel okay if I have a Grey's Anatomy downloaded on my computer. But another thing that I do, I always bring matching flannel pajamas. Like it's so ground. If I have my matching pajamas, like I just, I'm like, it's, I'm okay. Like I'm at home, I'm in my matching pajamas. It's That's weird. so sweet. But it really does help me feel more at home wherever mm -hmm. I am because like I always wear those at home. Yeah. Be I used to get really lonely and really mm -hmm. homesick, but I think focusing on being more present has helped me because I was always so eager to be somewhere else when I first started mm -hmm. modeling. Like I was lonely and I was like, I don't know these people. Like I want to be with my people. I want to be at home. I want to be where I'm comfortable. But if you lean into it a little bit mm -hmm. more and you're present, you're like, okay, like what's going on here? Like, what can I learn here? Like, what can I learn from these people? Like, or this place, like really focusing on being present mm -hmm. in, a, in a moment in a place has helped. Yeah. I love that you're about awareness. Do you have a nighttime routine? You know, I've like, read that they help you kind of sometimes if you have a hard time sleeping, like mm -hmm. with jet lag and traveling, having like a go-to nighttime routine mm -hmm. helps Actually, you. But another thing that I do do is I have an app on my phone that um, plays sounds and I always do like a white noise, but it's kind of like- Is uh, this the a ASMR? No, <laughs> oh my God. I was trying to teach Martha about ASMR. Me and Martha should do ASMR, comment below. Comment below, I have to start she saying does, that. Comment below, Comment please. below, she doesn't even know what it is. And she's like, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> I also have a sound machine, so I listen to that and it's really like triggering for me in a good way because I listen to it every night before I go to bed. And even if I'm in a weird place and on the plane, I have my earphones in and I listen to my white okay, noise. I want to know this. Speaking of traveling and being alone, did you ever live in model apartments? I did not. Oh really? I, <laughs> you stayed in model apartment, right? You oh said, yeah, I've yeah. stayed in quite a few. I've had some kind of traumatizing that experiences. That be a video in itself. You that should be a video in itself. Do you want to know what model apartments are For the kleptomaniac really that I lived with. <laughs> She's I'm calling you out. She stole money from my mom. Like, it's mm. horrible. And she was like cutting up my shirts. So speaking of model apartments, do you find within the industry that models are competitive with one another? 